Okay, students, I am going to take y'all through how to work these graphs here. This is especially being done for the online students, but if the face-to-face -face students find it useful, power to you. Let me switch cameras here. All right. So I'm going to try to zoom in here so we can focus in on each one of these types of graphs here. Now, this first practice graph here, I want you all to see, you notice we have got a horizontal labor supply curve. This is similar to how we saw something in Unit 2. Remember in Unit 2 when we had a horizontal product demand curve for the firm? It was a perfectly competitive producing firm. Well, a horizontal labor supply curve means that it is a perfectly competitive hiring firm. So the thing is we're going to write the words perfectly competitive. Okay, let me adjust this thing here a little bit. This is not very well oriented where I can put my hands here. I need moved a hand I need a place to move my hands here, obviously. Okay. Labor market. Okay. So that's the first thing we identify is the market structure for labor. Now, excuse me while I keep making adjustments here. This thing with the cell phone is a little on the awkward side. I think my cell phone's also a little heavy too, which does not help. But I'll I'll get the hang of this sooner or later. Okay. All right, we almost got it. Yeah, there we go. There we go. Now, I want you to also notice here that we got Debbie Star here, the market equilibrium wage rate. You will notice here that Debbie Star is below Omega, which is the terminal wage rate. So that means labor is affordable. So it does hire labor. So we'll make a little note here. It hires labor as W Star less than Omega. You could also say it hires labor because the labor supply curve is below omega for some values of L. That's also another way to say it that works just as well. Now, remember our rule for hiring labor. If the firm hires labor, it does. It hires L star workers corresponding to MRP being equal to MFC. Now, let's zoom in on this a little bit here if it'll let me. Okay. Remember the MRP of labor curve functions as a firm's labor demand curve, and that is here. Okay. And here's the MFC of labor curve, which is the labor supply sitting on top of. MRP is equal to MFC, right where they intersect there. Okay. And so we're going to label. And so, <laughs> folks, I do not know what is going on with this rack here for my cell phone, but the thing is, it is not exactly very friendly to putting space here for my hands. Okay. The thing is here, MRP equals MFC right here. And so we make the intersection here. We go straight down to the labor axis, and there's L star. Corner A is always on the same line as W star or as the wage rate, whatever it's going to be here. And so notice that. Now, let's take a look at this geometry here. We have got a trapezoid. We have a rectangle. And we have a triangle. Please also remember that we make an assumption we work with labor graphs. This is the keep it simple, sir. Keep it simple, sister statement here. And that is we assume that labor is the only explicit cost. So that way we have accounting profits findable on these graphs here. Let me zoom out a wee bit here. Okay. The deal is this here, okay? Total revenue is not easy to find because we do not have price of output times quantity of output. We have a thing called marginal revenue product of labor. That's the change in the total revenue divided by the change in the number of workers. Now, funny thing about MRP of labor, we can backdoor calculate the total revenue by adding the MRPs of labor for every single worker that's hired, starting at zero workers or stopping at the last worker hired. And we add up all those MRPs of labor, to get total revenue, that's the trapezoid. So the thing is, I'm going to write up here somewhere that TR, excuse me here, is equal to area trapezoid zero omega a L star. Now, we can't find total cost because fixed costs are not located on this graph. What we can find is the labor cost here. Wage rate times number of workers employed, that labor cost. And so that's the area of that rectangle. So LC for labor cost is equal to area rectangle zero W star A L star. Now, in order to find accounting profits, we are assuming labor is the only explicit cost recall. And so the trapezoid minus the rectangle is going to give you this triangle here. So we're going to write pi accounting is equal to area triangle W star omega A. 
But again, we can only make that assumption here in these graphs. We could drop a black box in here, and in the black box, say that's a fixed cost. So we'd have some other weird shapes for uh, economic profits, and that just doesn't work very well. I think this method is neater. Now let's zoom on down here to this next one, G4. Please notice this is also a perfectly competitive labor market. Please remember all words mandatory. But in this case here, you notice that W star is above omega for all values of L. And so labor is too expensive. Notice MRP never equals MFC where we have a positive labor value. So here everybody's terminated, which means we will not have any labor hired. So firm does not hire labor as W star greater than omega for all L's. Or you could say labor supply is above uh, omega for all else. That works either way. Labor is too expensive. We don't have any workers. Now, we have to explain what's going on. There are no areas to show as L star equals zero workers. TR is equal to zero dollars and zero cents. Okay. Pardon me there, y'all. TC, or LC, is equal to zero dollars and zero cents. TC equals FC, and we have an economic loss. We don't have to talk about counting losses this time. It's an economic loss. Now I need a red pen. Son of a gun, where did I put my red pen? <laughs> Hold on a second. Ah, I got one over here. Okay. Economic losses is equal to fixed costs in red ink, red round parentheses. All righty. Remember, even when the firm shuts down and does not hire labor, we have to explain ourselves. If we don't, we're not providing enough information to the reader here, and that's kind of important. Now, let me see if I can adjust this camera a little better so I've got some more room to work here, and then at the same time, a little less play, okay? Because I need to be able to get this thing to work. I need to be able to zoom in on this thing adequately, but at the same time, I need room for my hands. Okay, so again, students, I ask you, please forgive me for all the shakiness here. We're going to move down to this next graph here. Now, if you take a look at this next graph, graph G2, you'll notice the labor supply curve is upward sloping. So that tells you it's a monopsony. But notice we don't have a WCBU. The graph right next door is a WCBU. It looks almost identical to that first one, except there's a union contract wage here, and there's not there. So this here would be a bilateral or two-sided monopsony because of the union contract wage, and this would be a unilateral or one-sided monopsony because it's absent there. So let me find my blue pen again. I keep setting my pens everywhere. Absent my professor syndrome, as I like to call that here. And let's move this other stuff out of the way so I've got room to work again. Okay, <laughs> folks, if a cluttered desk is a sign of a cluttered mind, an empty desk is a sign of an empty mind. Okay, so this is a one- Sided monopsony, and that here is a two sided monopsony. Now, let's talk about this one sided monopsony for a moment. I want everybody to notice here where the omega value is. The omega value is up here, and notice labor supplies below the omega's vertical height. Okay, hires labor as labor supply below omega for some values of L. So we're hiring labor here. Okay, so since we're hiring labor, the general optimization rule for employment applies. We hire L star workers corresponding to MRP equals MFC, which is where they intersect. We go straight down here, and that's where you find L star, and pardon how cluttered this graph is here. Now, we need to mark Corner A on the labor supply curve and corner B on the MFC of labor curve. Class wage rate is always red off the labor supply unless you're dealing with a two-sided monopsony. But for a one-sided, it's red off of there. Now, whenever everybody take a look at this geometry we have here, we've got a big trapezoid, we've got a rectangle, and we have a stump of a trapezoid at the top. Now, again, to get total revenue, you add up all the MRPs of labor that start, pardon me, at zero workers, and stop at L star workers here. And again, please pardon what I'm trying to do here. I'm trying to separate this a little bit. Okay, this is being done on the fly here. So the area of the big trapezoid from zero to omega to B to L star is equal to total revenue, sum of all the MRPs of labor. So area trapezoid zero, omega, B, L star. Now, W star times L star is labor cost. So that's the area of a rectangle again. Area rectangle zero, okay, W star, 
AL star. But the difference between them is this trapezoid up here, and I don't want y'all shading it in. I'm trying to shade it in a little bit just for the sake of the video here. That is the degree to which the labor cost, not the labor cost, but the total revenue exceeds the labor cost here. And so since we're assuming labor is the only explicit cost, the accounting profits are equal to the area, okay, of that trapezoid, okay, from W star to omega to B to A. This trapezoid at the top here is the accounting profits again. Now, I'm going to go over to this one. I want you to notice positive slope labor supply curve. Okay, so it's a monopsony. No W sub U, but it's one-sided. But what about this monopsony? Does it hire labor? Well, all these wage rates on labor supply are greater than omega, so the answer is no, it does not. This is a one-sided monopsony. Does D-O-E-S not hire labor? and labor and shuts down. Reason, labor supply above omega for all else. Okay, so, okay, no, let's put this thing in here. I'm sorry, guys. Okay, zoom out just a wee bit here. Okay, no areas to show as L star is equal to zero workers. Total revenue is equal to zero dollars and cents. Total, probably labor cost, excuse me, is equal to zero dollars and cents. Total cost is equal to fixed cost. And the economic losses, once again, red ink, red brown parentheses, fixed cost. Okay. Now, let's move on up over here to the two side monopsony. A two side monopsony is going to hire labor as long as W sub U is less than omega for some values of L, and it clearly is. So hires labor as W sub U, the union contract wage rate, is less than omega for some L's. But they have a different rule because the firm loses control over wages. They no longer have absolute control, and that is the last worker hired is going to be where MFC of labor equals W sub U, which is where they intersect. And this reminds you of. The regulated monopoly, there's some similarities here. We have to draw a right-hand side boundary that goes to the highest curve above that intersection where MFC intersects W sub U, and that's the MRP uh, sub labor. That's corner B. Corner A is always on the same segment, excuse me, as the wage rate. And this is going to be LU for the number of workers, the amount of labor hired on the union contract. We have a big trapezoid. We have a rectangle. I'm sorry, this is not a perfectly straight line. It's angling a little bit. And then we have... Uh, a stump of a trapezoid up here. Total revenue under union contract is the area of that big trapezoid. It's the sum of the MRPs of labor from zero to LU. Area of the trapezoid from zero to omega to B to LU, like owl blue, like owl I'm blue, okay? The wage rate times the number of workers is still the total cost of labor. We call that LC sub U, and that's the area of the rectangle from zero to W sub U to A to L U, Owalu, okay? <laughs> Sounds like uh, some kind of a name from some exotic country, I don't know. And then the difference between the two of them is this stump of a trapezoid up here, and again, please don't shade it in, I just wanna make sure it's visible to the video watchers here. The accounting profits are always the difference between total revenue and labor cost because we assume that labor is the only explicit cost. So the accounting profits are equal to the area of the stump of a trapezoid from W sub U to Omega to B to A. Wooba! Sounds like a sound that a saw makes. Anyhow, so that's what our two side monopsony looks like. And I'm gonna make a little comment here. I want everybody to take a look here at that W sub U. I'm zooming in for a moment. I didn't choose that W sub U willy nilly. That W sub U that I chose, notice it's where labor supply crosses labor demand. Well, with a one side monopsony, this is the only firm that hires labor, so their demand is market demand. And that's the only firm that workers hire themselves out to, so their supply is labor supply for the entire market. That W sub U is what we call the competitive equilibrium wage rate. But this is obviously not a perfectly competitive labor market. But remember in some of the problems it says, if you have a one side monopsony that is hiring labor, you have to reconstruct it as if it was a two-sided, or vice versa. If you start with a two-sided, you remove the union contract and reconstruct it as one-sided. But when we go from one to two-sided, it always says you're supposed to use the union contract wage rate as the competitive wage rate, and that's always found where labor supply crosses labor demand. So be mindful of that. 
Now, this last one I'm going to show you here is where my grandpa, a former union shop steward, would say it's gotten too big for its britches. It's gotten too arrogant. It's expecting too much and giving too little. I want you to notice that the omega value is below WCBU. The union is demanding a ridiculously high wage rate, so ridiculously high, in fact, that this firm it can't afford to hire labor and manages to say, come back and talk to us when you're more reasonable. Otherwise, we're looking at relocating or hiring scabs. This union is not going to do too well under the circumstances because of this here. And so we have a two-side monopsony because of the WCBU being present. However, the WCBU is so high, it's above omega for all values of L, it does not hire, excuse me, let me zoom out a wee bit more, labor as W sub U is above omega for all else. So, LU is equal to zero workers. Total cost of labor, probably not, sorry, total revenue is zero dollars and zero cents. Labor cost under this union is equal to zero dollars and zero cents. Total cost under the union is equal to fixed costs. And you're gonna have an economic loss under this union contract that is a negative value of fixed costs with one last caveat. If this union does not get new leadership or if the leaders don't come back with reasonable uh, explanations, one of two things can happen. Either A, the union starts hiring scabs or B, they relocate, uh, 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 that's not the union, but the firm starts hiring scabs and the union gets broken and eventually loses its power, or B, uh, the uh, firm relocates to someplace that doesn't have a union and everybody loses their jobs and then the union bosses will be tarred and feathered and run out of town on a rail, as the saying goes. But anyhow, this is kind of a nice little quick setup on how to solve these things here. I hope this is helpful to everybody. I do appreciate your time and I do thank you all very much here. All right, have a good day, everybody, and we're shutting this thing down if I can figure out how.